There we oh, go. There we go. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Senate Education. It is March 31st, Wednesday. And uh, today we are starting with um, a conversation with Senator White and Mr. Carroll. Uh, and then we're going to move into uh, return to uh, public school facilities. Um, it, uh, the conversation we started yesterday or continued yesterday with H. 426. We're then going to talk a little bit about COVID relief funding, continuing that. And then uh, we have a request uh, from um, the career and technical education folks and Senator Kitchell to look into uh, their funding a bit. So with that, um, Senator White, it's great to have you here. And Mr. Carroll, uh, good to have you back. You are becoming a frequent flyer. I don't know if you're actually there, but we see your name. Thank uh, you. He may not be because I was in the waiting room for a long, long time. And then it sent me a message that said I was trying to get in with the wrong code. Oh, okay. Well, we're glad you made it in, Senator White. And Mr. Carroll. Hi, Mr. Carroll. We see you now. Terrific. So I'm wondering if the two of you would be so kind as to uh, bringing us back to uh, and giving us a little bit of history and a reminder of the situation that the two of you are particularly interested in having Senate Ed uh, kind of endorse that would then perhaps move through government operations. And I know some things happened uh, last year in committee as the new chair, I'm still reading those history books. And uh, we did have Mr. Carroll in to talk a little bit about, I believe what we're going to hear from both of you about, but it would be just a great reminder uh, if, if you wouldn't mind bringing us back and, and giving us some uh, some real understanding on this. So with that, uh, the floor is yours. Sure, thanks. Um, so the we set up a committee called the Boards and Commissions Sunset Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to um, eliminate unnecessary boards and commissions, ones that didn't meet, um, one, or change the statutes of others to reflect the current situation. In the summer of 2018, the committee chose to eliminate the State Board of Education, and we put it, that in the bill for the 2019 session. Uh, Mr. Carroll came and talked to us and um, told us that the he was the new chair and that they were going to be working on changes to the State Board of Education, but we thought by putting in the elimination in there, it would um, spur on the conversation. There was, they would have to have the conversation. So we put it in the bill for the 2019 session. The House took it out because the Boards and Commissions bill starts in the House. The House took it out and um, asked House Education to address the issue. They did not address the issue. In 2019 and 2020, Senate Education worked with the State Board and the agency and passed, I believe it was S-166, is that right, Mr. Carroll? That's correct. S-166 passed, it passed through the entire Senate and the House Education Committee, again, did not address that did not take up that bill. I'm sure part of that was because of COVID. It kind of passed at the end of the 2020 session before we, when we were just about to adjourn <coughs> for um, COVID issues. So um, then in the summer of 2020, the Sunset Advisory Committee added the entire bill, S-166, into the Boards and Commissions um, Sunset Advisory Committee bill. We thought this would again spur the conversation. And again, the House took it out because the Education Committee wanted to address it. And what they decided to do instead of addressing it was to set up a summer study committee to look at the issue. Um, <clears throat> So it has now been three years that House Education has not addressed this issue. Senate Education did pass the uh, bill and worked with the 
agency and the state board on passing S-126, 166. So the question now is, should Senate government operations put a portion of S-166 back into H-122? I understand that um, it probably wouldn't be wise to put the whole bill in because there are some details in there that might need a little more work, <clears throat> but the sections that specifically address the um, necessary changes that need to be made. As it turns out, what we heard in the, in the uh, advisory, the Sunset Advisory Committee is that <clears throat> the current statutes are terribly out of line with what current practice is. And um, some of, just one of the things, and I'm sure Mr. Carroll talked to you about this and will more, but one of the issues was that um, it, this current statutes give the board the ability to make all kinds of rules that um, rightly should belong with the agency of education. And so um, that's, that's the dilemma that we're in right now. Should we put this back in? We would love to put it back in and send it back to the house and see what they do with it. But we really need to have um, the, this education committee's um, endorsement uh, for doing that. We won't do it unless you decide to do it. And I think Mr. Carroll can talk more specifically about the sections that really need to be in there now and the sections that can't. It's a relatively long bill because it makes all the changes whenever you're changing um, a board. So that's that's where we are. And we would love to put it back in. And the, I'll tell you who is on the Sunset Advisory Committee, just in case you're interested. It's Representative LeClaire and Representative Gannon, uh, Senator Collimore and myself, and Matt Krause, who is a governor's appointee, and Sue Zeller as a governor's appointee. Well, I mean, the idea of working collaboratively with government Senate Government Ops is incredibly exciting, and I appreciate your willingness to, to possibly do this for us. Uh, and so, and I also appreciate your, your understanding and willingness to let us, you know, dig into this a little bit. Uh, Mr. Carroll was in early on when things were getting started uh, to take us through some stuff, but we definitely would need a review. Senator White, what is your, your timing on this? Uh, could you, I mean, if, if we could work, between, you know, next week here and there on it, would you, you're okay. Oh yeah, this is okay. a house bill, so it doesn't okay. have to go back. We would right. just like it to be able to go back so that the house actually, because if we put something in there, it's gonna have to go back to the house. Yeah. And so we would like to be able to send it back in time for them to, to figure out what they're gonna do with it. Um, and, and I really think that this, I mean, it has now been three years that yeah. this issue has been worked on it and the House Education Committee has not taken it up. So, except to set up a study committee. So that's, yeah, that's, that's uh, I would, what I would suggest is that you work with Mr. Carroll to come up with the language that um, might be necessary to put back into H, it's an H-122 bill and um, we will do what. Well, I think we've heard enough. There we go. What? Oh, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Can, Sorry, you can't hear. I'm, I'm, you're you're. Uh, I'm losing you on my screen. Can you all oh. hear? You broke up a little bit there, Senator White. Oh, I I'm sorry. So we'll do. We'll if you were. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. So I I would suggest. I was just saying. I would suggest that you work with Mr. Carroll to figure out what um what language needs to be in there from S one sixty six. And I wouldn't put in new language. Yeah. Just the sections from one sixty six because if you put in new, then it really changes yeah. um what we had done before. And and then we'll do whatever you um want us to do. Great. Uh, Senator White, and I know you probably have to get back and we can turn it to Mr. Carroll, but just a quick question and others may have questions before we lose you. So overall though, this bill, the sunset bill, what is it, what is it looking at just broadly? Oh, it it eliminates, we go, we've been going through, it's a three-year uh, committee. Uh -huh. We've been going through every board and commission 
that exist okay. in the state and eliminating ones that don't meet. We actually eliminated one um, that had to do with foreign trade and Senator Lyons had a little fit and um, we put it back in. And, but it, what it did was by us eliminating it, it spurred that committee on to start meeting again. So right. that's what we've been doing is eliminating ones that don't need to exist or that don't meet and changing the statutes of the ones that need to exist but current statutes are not in line with what they currently do. And then what work happens with that, when we change those, it goes to the committee of jurisdiction, which is what happened here. It went to the Senate Education Committee. Questions for Senator White. Senator Lyons, please. Uh, and my question is, so uh, how do we encourage the um, administration and the governor in particular to make appointments to some of these commissions or committees so that they can meet? Well, we, uh, um, we are working on with the archivist um, to set up a, a software that will list all the commissions and committees and boards that it'll list their uh, duties, who their appointing powers are, what their terms are, who the current members are, when they're and the archivist is working on that. And if there are uh, boards and commissions that need to have appointments, I would, um, Jason Malucci was the person that was doing it for the governor, but he is no longer doing it. I'm not sure who the person is now, yeah. but we, we contacted, we would contact him and say, hey, can you make these appointments? And um, it was, it got results. Good work. It did get results for at least a couple of appointments mm -hmm. to the commission, but still not. Okay. Other questions for Senator White. Okay. Thank you, Senator White. We'll, with Mr. Carroll, if you mind uh, sticking around, and we'll have a conversation with you. That would be great. Okay. And I'll. If you have any more questions, feel free okay. to. Terrific. Thank you me. so much. Okay. Thank Thanks. You know. Bye. Uh, Senator Perslick, do you want to just uh, remind us, this is work that you worked on um, last year as well. I remember that was raised when Mr. Carroll was first in. Um, and the committee supported the work and uh, unanimously to, to make these, these, these changes. And because um, we had a bill last year, I think Brock had introduced to, to get rid of the board. And so I think we took that bill. We had Senator Brock in and he explained why he think we should just get rid of it. Yeah. Um, but then what Chair Bruce did is basically had AOE with Secretary French and then Mr. Carroll for the board just kind of go back and forth. It was almost like a negotiation about which, which things we should keep of which things. And my understanding is in the end, everybody agreed you know, that the board you know, through Mr. Carroll and AOE through Mr. French agreed on a split of duties and the, and the committee was unanimous in that support as well. I think there was a, you know, at the beginning, I don't know if there was anybody that wanted, that supported the bill just to get rid of it, but it, that's how it, that's how it started the conversation. It was the way I remember it. Thank you very much. Um... Mr. Carroll, uh, thanks again for being with us. Uh, as I recall, when you first came in to see us uh, back in January, this was something that was a, a priority of yours, something that you wanted to make certain happen, these changes, and correct me if I'm wrong, while you were the chair as part of your um, goals and objectives. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you'd be so kind to suggest, again, give us the, the broad overview. We'll have Mr. Demaray take us through the bill next week, uh, the sections that uh, you would like us to include in the government operations um, uh, house bill. But for now, if you wouldn't mind just giving us again that refresher uh, as to what you're hoping that we might do. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is John Carroll, Chair of the State Board of Education. Um, uh, as Senator Perchlick will recall, and Jim knows really well, uh, it, it became a, a pretty comprehensive bill, um, 100, 100, uh, 
about 59 pages, 69 sections. Um, and I, but to put it in some perspective, it had four elements to it. Um, the first element was the one that I guess I frankly have to admit I was highly motivated about. When I joined the state board in 2017, I think I may have told you in January, I, I was just mortified by what the board had been doing about independent schools. I don't happen to have a stake in independent schools, but it surely looked like the state board was trying by means of rulemaking to marginalize some state schools, some uh, independent schools. And you may recall there were several senators who, and members of the house who introduced legislation to abolish the board because people felt, um, well, the term was getting out over their skis. Um, and and I, I really, uh, felt passionately about that. I think, I suppose, because I spent six years in your shoes. Um, and, and so one of my goals as of joining the board um, was to, to get the board reined into where it, it is appropriate. That is to say, not pretending to be uh, legislators, <laughs> but in, instead to be uh, taking our cues from and direction from the legislature and writing rules which are faithful to the intent of statute. Uh, that's what the first section of uh, the bill does. And then there are three other parts. Uh, so so the, for me, the primary goal of this bill was to rein in this uh, essentially abuse of authority. A second was to um, get the board out of, I've got to find a more delicate way to put this, micromanaging the state, the agency of education. You recall the board used to be in charge of the agency of education back until 2012. And really in many ways, the board had never, never really quite got the memo that the world had changed and they were no longer in charge. And to his credit, Secretary French kind of in the first meeting with us said, by the way, I don't answer to you folks. And that was sort of kind of news to some of the board members. Um, and so part of my goal was to get the statute modified so that these vestigial provisions that Senator White was alluding to uh, would, would be history. Um, it, we would think things like uh, if, if a school district needed to, to modify their school year because of additional snow days, the state board would have to look over the shoulder of the secretary in granting that approval. And frankly, we bring no expertise, no value to that conversation. And we just delayed the process and made him jump through more hoops than he or she should have to do. Uh, so we wanted to get the board out of this business of micromanaging. And a third area that was important to us both was and is the rulemaking. And, and Senator Perslick referred to this. This was an area where there was a lot of, frankly, tension between the agency and the board. Um, the agency wanted to get all the rulemaking to them. And we wanted to, we offered to transfer about 27, about 22 of the 30 rules to the agency and the general uh, algorithm we used was, is the rule essentially administrative in character? I mean, there are rules that, that determine how long school buses may idle. And um, may, I'm sure there's a need for such a rule, but frankly, the, age, the board of edu, the state board has no expertise in, in such an area. And that sort of thing should be under the authority of the agency. In the, in the end, the bill that the Senate committee, um, I, I think that Senator Pertzlick used the term negotiated, and I think that's actually a very good term, uh, was that the, the baby was divided. About uh, five or six of the rules stayed with the Board of Education, and those are the rules that really uh, speak to educational quality, what happens in schools, the quality of education, uh, and all of the rest, um, so that's about 24 out of 30 went to the agency. And I think it was the committee's understanding, uh, it was certainly mine, that we had an agreement on that. Uh, that went forward, uh, was endorsed by the committee unanimously and voted by all of you unanimously last year. 
went over to the house and of course it got stuck in the COVID pipeline. Um, I, I don't fault the house for that at all. Um, and, and then earlier this year, it turns out that uh, Secretary French either changed his mind or never had agreed and has put forward a proposal to uh, transfer all rulemaking uh, to the Agency of Education. He didn't tell us about this, but that's been circulating in the General Assembly. Uh, we found that surprising and maybe even disturbing. We thought there was an agreement, uh, but he tells us, I asked him the other day and he said, no, I, I, I didn't agree to that. So Senator Perchlick and I and others apparently were under a misimpression. Um, in any case, it seems like that's a big sticking point and is gonna take some serious conversations. Um, and then finally, the fourth purpose of the bill. So let me just be clear. The first purpose was to rein in excess of uses of authority. The second was to get the state board out of micromanaging the agency. The third was to share some rules. And the fourth was simply to do a ton of, um, what do you call them, conforming changes that, that Jim and others spotted throughout the entirety of statute. And that's what really added to the, brought us up to the 59 pages. Uh, what I, what I, when Senator White contacted me, so, well, so my, my, let me back up. So before I was contacted by Senator White, I was just in touch with uh, Chair Webb of the House Committee saying, I hope you can do something on this. And she, for various reasons, felt they wouldn't get to it till the summer. And I said, okay, well, we'll get to it then. But frankly, quite worried about how, how we're ever gonna renegotiate this rules business. Anyway, Senator White contacted me two weeks ago and said, we'd like to put something in the, what is it? The, commissions and boards and commissions bill. And um, my, my counsel was that we should be very careful about that. I think that that runs the risk of really um, and running the committees of jurisdiction. Um, and I recommended to her that only the very basics of the bill, which were the concerns raised by the Sunset Committee should be included in anything that would be in the boards and commissions bill. Um, and that's a very small part of 166. It's actually about two pages. Um, it's, so what I'm, so if you're interested in pursuing this at all, and I can understand if you're not, but if you do wish to pursue it at all, my, my recommendation to Senator White and to you is to limit what's included to be the language which uh, really goes directly to the, I hate to use the term abuses of authority, it's so strong, to the um, indiscretions that, that uh, were uh, practiced by the board in the past and that were a cause of great concern to many, many legislators and would have been to me if I were in your shoes. And, that it, and so specifically what I have drafted um, um, Really, I haven't drafted anything. I've simply excerpted pieces of 166. Um, and, and it comes from what's called section one, which is the part that speaks to what the board will do. Part two speaks to what the secretary will do. My thought was given this tension between the board and the secretary that has recently arisen in the last couple of months about rulemaking, it's not my place to say anything about the secretary of education. We ought to confine our advocacy to the board itself and what, how the board needs to change and improve. And specifically what the, the very brief excerpt, it's about two pages, it takes the very beginning of the bill and where, where the bill says, uh, it repeals the language which, which um, was put in, in in 2012, which gave the board the authority to quote, establish policy. And that language, however well-intentioned, has been what was exploited by the board to do some stuff that simply was never countenanced in law. Um, and also at my request, Jim added language around rulemaking to say that um, such rulemaking shall be to carry out the powers and duties of the state board of the board 
as directed by the General Assembly uh, within the limits of legislative intent. So it was a, just an attempt to fence the board even more around or into the corral that says, this is what you can do as stated by the General Assembly and no more. And you can't, you can't wander out of the corral anymore. You've got to stay true to the legislative direction you have. So again, so, just, just so that we know, so you had four, pri you have four priorities. We're really addressing that first priority. Really? Uh, and Jim has language on that. Uh, uh, Mr. Jim Ray, I believe, uh, I'm just looking for a nod. You have language for us to look at uh, next week. Uh, yeah, um, so yes, uh, I don't have new language. I have language from last year in this bill, S-166. If the first priority is to change the wording around state board's responsibilities, take away reference to making policy, that's a very simple change. Once you get into rearranging who has rulemaking authority, then the consequence of that is it affects the entire Title 16. Mm -hmm. So that's where you, you can't just change the rulemaking authority up front and not align it with everything in the whole title. And so that's what we get into a 60 page rewrite. So if that's what you want to do, it's a much bigger deal. If it's just clarifying that the state board doesn't have policy making responsibilities, that's a very simple thing to do. Mr. Carroll, what are you thinking? That's precisely okay. the thrust of the two pages that I accepted from 166. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's simply sections one through seven uh, in, in the beginning of the bill. I can go over this with you, Jim, if you like. Uh, I think what would be I'll, probably, I'll, um, uh, and I'll look to Mr. Demaray for his endorsement or uh, thumbs down on this, if you would forward it to Mr. Demaray and to uh, the members of the committee or to Jeannie and she'll get it to all of us, right. uh, we can have a look at it and um, we can talk with Mr. Demaray as to whether or not that fits in the, with the description of, right. of your goal. Right. And we may hear, uh, you know, uh, back from you again next week uh, when we take it up um, and perhaps from the agency just to make sure that again they're they're on board but this doesn't sound like a terribly heavy lift and it sounds and I really appreciate you reaching out to the house to get there you know I, it would have been nice if they had the time to do it but that, I completely understand but I appreciate your outreach there as well as to Senator White, it only helps our work and advances uh, what I think makes a lot of sense. Mr. Demaray, do you please? Yeah, just to say, I think, uh, Chair Carroll, I think page one through seven also rearrange responsibilities for making rules. But I don't go as far as page one through seven. I stop at page two. Okay. Okay. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Okay. Right. I don't want to mess with rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Senator Hooker. Well, um, thank you, Senator Campion. And uh, Mr. Carroll, but you did make reference to rules and said something about fencing the department in. Uh, oh, 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 the board. The board in, fencing the Sorry, board. I, if okay. I said the department, I apologize. I want to fence the board in on its rulemaking so that it does not excurd out into territory okay, that's not so authorized by statute. You're considering keeping those five rules that the board that pertain to the board or the board has some. Uh, Actually, this would remain silent on rules. Oh, okay. On specific rules, because okay. there seemed I thought we had an agreement, and there seemed that seems to have dissipated. And so I, I just don't feel like I can speak about which rules go where. That seems to be a, a new fight that we have to work through offline somehow. Um, okay, thank you. I, I must have misheard you, yeah, um, your reference to who was gonna have the fence around them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I did. I must have misspoken. It's, it's, it's the board that needs to be fenced. <laughs> sure. Senator Perslick. Yeah, well, it's, I'd be interested to have Secretary French in just to see, but I mean, I trust Mr. Carroll, but it would be good to hear what he says, what, what has changed since last year. And that, I thought it was a good progress on clearing up all those rules, 
but I guess if there's a disagreement, it's going to take a bunch of time. Then I understand trying to just do the, the quick and easy version. But if we have time, Mr. Chair, it would be good to hear what he's thinking, maybe for next year or something. Yeah, well, I absolutely think, you know, as, as I understand, and please, if others would like more on this, I'm thinking next Wednesday, we would hear perhaps again from Mr. Carroll, we'll have Mr. Demaray bring the language, we'll have Secretary French, I'd like to see Mr. Carroll's language to make sure there's no pork or anything for Norwich sneaked in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's where I think. Um, and then if, if others want to hear from additional people, but um, and we're happy to do so, but I, I think we can we can get this work done. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Carroll sticking with us on this. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Carroll or Mr. Demaray on this? Mr. Carroll, final word. Uh, just I uh, wanted to observe that we on the board are so frustrated by this rulemaking conversation that I, I'm going to propose to the secretary that we put together a working group between a, with a couple of board members and a couple of folks from the agency and sort this thing out once and for all without taking any more time with the General Assembly. Until, until there's a, an agreement that will hold up, I think this has become quite futile, um, at least the, the big picture rule allocation. So uh, I, I hope we can get that sort of solved offline in the next couple of months so that when, when the House committee is ready to look, take a look at that, this thing is back online and there's, a, there's an agreement. Um, no, thank you. And if there's any way that we can be helpful in terms of facilitating those conversations, uh, uh, please just let us know and appreciate your patience. Uh, and I'm sorry we didn't get to this sooner, um, but I'm glad we're, we're going to try to advance uh, at least this, this one piece uh, this year. I, I will. I will then send to uh, to Jim and to all of you um, the the draft that I shared with Senator White. The two pages that does not go into rulemaking, other than to say, be careful how you do it. All right, great. And uh, Jeannie, if you would be so kind as to uh, for Wednesday, we'll have uh, Mr. Carroll and Secretary French uh, back. That works for both of their schedules on Wednesday. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It's great to see you again. Thank you so much. Appreciate your help very much.